ladies and gentlemen, one of the first things I saw this morning was a post by one Molly Ifani. He posted a story, a very brief story by one Igbo gentleman called Joe Ibokwe. Joe Ibokwe wrote, if you are a Nigerian and you do not know that the Yoruba nation is the most successful, most educated, most civilized, most peaceful, most organized, most cultured ethnic group in Nigeria, you deceive yourself and the truth is not in you. I read between the lines and I knew where Ibokwe was going. Ibokwe was not addressing Nigerians. Ibokwe was addressing the Igbo people, his own people. And I am very familiar with Ibokwe and the Igbo relations. Most Igbos online and offline do not see Ibokwe as either a friend or as a brother. But I always want to be above the fray. I disagree with many positions Ibokwe has taken. I disagree completely and vehemently with a lot of positions Ibokwe has taken. But I also do not throw away his positions without looking at them very carefully. Because even the broken clock can be once, can be right once a day. And even though I know that his intention for writing this was not necessarily to tell Nigerians that the Yorubas are all these things he claimed, but he was, his intention was to ask the Igbos or to put it to the Igbos. This is where the Yorubas are and this is where you are. Because these two ethnic groups compete. Let us face facts. The Yorubas and the Igbos even compete more than either of them. And the Fulani, which overtook the houses and uh, absorbed the houses. As the Holy Book, the Hebrew Bible or the Hebrew Bible tells us, out of something bitter, something good came out. So I decided to extract the good from this post by Nolly Fani, which this post by Nolly Fani, which contained the writing by Ibokwe. And consider my response. I read this with mixed feelings. Much of what Joe Ibokwe alleged can be authenticated. But because I know his intent to tell his Igbo brothers and sisters that they are backward, his right up gave me mixed feelings. I prefer not to throw the baby away with the bathwater. As I noted, he posited what he cannot prove because I don't see how the Yoruba are ahead of the Epic Ibibio, Egala, Idoma in the areas he listed. These are four nations in Nigeria. I have not had about strife within these four nations I mentioned. We have never ever seen the Epic fighting within themselves, the Ibibio fighting within them, fighting within themselves. The Doma fighting within, fighting within themselves, the Gala fighting within themselves. We have not seen it. But we know that a few years ago, not so long ago, the Yoruba people waged the Ife Moda Keke war and they killed thousands of themselves. A peaceful people don't behave like that. A peaceful people don't behave like that. If Ibokwe says, that in the last 50 years, in the last, to be clearer, 20 years, in the last 15 years, 
that Yorubas have maintained peace within themselves far more than Igbos. I will be the first person to raise his hands. But his claim was that they have been more peaceful than other Nigerians. And that is not true. But still, I believe that his real intent was to ask, ask the Igbos, what happened? Why is the average person of Igbo extraction afraid of going home to Igbo land? Basically because such a person is afraid that fellow Igbos will kill him. However, as I noted, he wrote for his Igbo people and not for Nigerians. And we, we Igbos should not attack him but ask questions. I know that Awolo, Awolo was a god to the Yorubas. The Yorubas are a people who revere their monarchs, so it's in them to revere their mm. champions. Mm. And Awolo was certainly a Yoruba champion. Go and read his biography. One of his basic reasons for resenting and hating the Igbo people was that according to him, younger Yorubas were looking up to the Igbos in the 1940s, 1950s, and 1960s. The Yorubas, we are looking up to the Igbo people. And that forced Awolowo to resent the Igbos. So what happened since then? What happened that presently the Igbos are looking up to the Yorubas? The answer is also obvious, but it's not the primary reason why we are in this. Those Igbos that the Yorubas looked up to, their worldview was directed by Omena and the Igbo religion and culture. The Igbos that are looking up to the Yoruba today are the Igbo Christians and the Igbo Muslims. Because I won't really get into it so much, but I will tell us what we can feel and relate to. The owners and the champions and the heroes and the big and the successful pastors in Nigeria are Yorubas. Millions of Igbo Christians look up to them. We could say more, but it's not important to say more. He that can think should think about this. If you are a Christian, your pastor or your priest he is the representative of Christ to you. You must look up to him. Even the Igbos that belong to Igbo founded churches, which are, by the way, regarded as, as a, not sophisticated churches, they would look up to the Yoruba pastors because the Yoruba pastors are at the top of the pyramid. They have the degrees. They started it. Nigerian Pentecostalism is a Yoruba institution. Mm -hmm. So, since 1960, what happened to the Igbos? Why did the tables turn? Instead of the Yorubas looking up to them, the Igbos are now looking up to the Yorubas. A colleague of mine in the Omena and Defenders, Nze Ibuebu Namado Okechuku, Elias Ibo Hebrew wanted us to focus on Ibo and I said that's not necessary. Let us focus on what he said. A lot of things he said are not the truth. The Yorubas don't go to school more than the Ibos. When I went to law school, there were only two states that will be called core Ibo states, Anambra and Imo. The Yorubas had five states we could call, call Yoruba states. But there were more Igbo people in law school when I went to law school than there were Yorubas. But I would not brag my chest today and brag that the Igbos are educated. Because even though I'm sure that there are more Igbos in tertiary, there are more Igbos who have gone to university than there are Yorubas. But what is the quality? What have those Igbos learned from colleges? I don't think we have learned much. All the time, you would see those Igbos you regard as highly educated, 
revealing that they don't really understand their basic immediate environment. Otherwise, why would an Igbo beat his chest and say, we built Kano, we built Sokoto, we built Abuja, we built Jos, we built Lagos, and never ever say, we took up on it, this an Igbo town, made sure that it is safe. We took up Enugu, made sure that nobody is robbed there. Took up Owere, made sure that prostitution is eliminated in Owere. All that you hear L.A.T. was talking about is how they went and became hostages in the lands of others. If they were not saying it with pride, I would say, well, I would correct them more gently. But I need to speak in harsh terms so that they would realize that we were in error. The only place we were obliged to develop was Igbo land, not the territories of other Nigerians. If we are to share anything to anybody in the world, it is our culture. God said that we should not have kings, that only him should be our kings. That was what we should have given to Nigerians, that they should rely on God as their king. We didn't share that. What we shared was abandoning our homeland, jumping out, shuttling out to buy lands and uh, build houses in the territories of other people. And we are proud of that. If our education was wholesome, we should have known that we were in error. That that did not mean that we were in any way a strong or patriotic people. Thank you. Have a good day. Think about this and think about how we are going to make the Igbo nation stand strong again. Because if this nation stands strong again in its culture, it will be a blessing to not only to themselves, but to everybody around them. Because they have a culture that everybody in the world needs today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.